Gold, one of the most coveted and enduring precious metals in the world, has fascinated humankind for millennia. Its shimmering allure, scarcity, and enduring value make it a symbol of wealth and power. But have you ever wondered how this glittering treasure is made? In this video, we'll embark on a journey through the fascinating process of gold creation, from mining to processing. For miners, embarking on a journey to unearth valuable minerals is a gamble that promises both fortunes and heartaches. These miners often confront unpredictable and formidable challenges, but their resilience shines brightest when they face a mining pit filled with water. In such trying circumstances, it is not uncommon to witness these determined individuals band together and decide to pump the water out, a testament to their unwavering spirit. The process of dewatering a mining pit is arduous and often labor-intensive. Miners continuously operate the water pump, which can be noisy and emit a strong gasoline scent. They take turns, working tirelessly in shifts, to keep the pump running 24-7. It's a race against time, and the miners are acutely aware of the lost income that each passing day represents. This struggle is not just about economic survival, it's also about ensuring the safety of the miners. The presence of water in mining pits can lead to cave-ins and other hazards. By diligently pumping out the water, these miners not only reclaim their livelihoods but also secure their lives in the process. And when all the water is pumped from the pit, the miners use chisels and hammers to break the rocks. Breaking rocks with a chisel and hammer is a practical and manual method for a variety of tasks, including geological sampling, construction, or mining activities. Depending on the type of rock you are working with and your intended purpose, choose an appropriate chisel. For softer rocks, a wide chisel may be sufficient, while harder rocks may require a pointed or flat-edged chisel. This is a hard rock so the pointed or flat-edged chisels were used. Air compressors are crucial pieces of equipment in mining, particularly for drilling operations. They provide a continuous source of high-pressure compressed air, which is used to power pneumatic tools, machinery, and drilling equipment. In mining, air compressors serve a range of essential functions, making drilling operations more efficient and productive. The process begins with the drilling of holes in the rock or ore. These holes are strategically placed to maximize the efficiency of the blast. The size, spacing, and depth of the holes depend on the specific geological conditions, the type of explosives used, and the desired fragmentation. After the holes are drilled, explosives are loaded into these holes. The type and amount of explosives used are carefully calculated to achieve the desired blast results. Explosives come in various forms, such as dynamite, ammonium nitrate fuel oil, ANFO, or emulsions. Tamping and blasting is a crucial technique used in the field of explosives and mining to optimize the effectiveness and safety of a blast. Tamping refers to the process of placing inert materials, such as sand, clay, or specialized tamping bags, on top of explosive charges in a blast hole. The process of tamping involves carefully layering the tamping material on top of the explosives in the blast hole. 
It is important to ensure that there are no voids or air gaps in the tamping material, as these could reduce the effectiveness of the blast and potentially lead to dangerous situations. Proper tamping is a fundamental component of safe and efficient blasting operations. When executed correctly, it helps focus the explosive energy where it is needed, minimizing the potential hazards associated with blasting and maximizing the desired results, such as rock fragmentation for excavation. Blasting is a fundamental and highly controlled process used in mining to break rock, ore, and other materials in order to facilitate excavation and extraction of valuable minerals or resources. It is a critical step in various mining methods, including open pit mining, underground mining, and quarrying. After the blast, some of the rocks break into larger sizes which can't be fed into the crusher. For this reason, the rocks are broken into smaller particles using a hammer. Panning for gold is a traditional and simple method used to test for the presence of gold in sediment or crushed rocks. It's commonly used by prospectors and miners to quickly assess the potential for finding gold in a particular location. Panning for gold is a skill that improves with practice. It's an effective way to determine the presence of gold in a sample, and it can be a rewarding activity for prospectors and hobbyists. Remember that while panning can help you find gold in small quantities, large-scale gold mining operations use more advanced methods for efficient extraction. Milling gold ore is a critical step in the process of extracting gold from its ore. The term milling in this context refers to the mechanical process of reducing the size of the ore to a fine, powdery consistency. This is done to liberate the gold particles from the surrounding rock or mineral matrix, making it easier to extract the valuable metal. Milling is a crucial stage in both small-scale and large-scale gold mining operations. Mixing milled ore with water is a common practice in many mining and mineral processing operations for several important reasons. Slurry formation, milled ore is typically a dry, powdery material after the grinding process. By mixing it with water, it is transformed into a slurry, which is a mixture of finely ground solids, the ore, suspended in water. The slurry has a more fluid-like consistency, making it easier to transport and process. Ease of transport Slurries are more manageable for conveying over long distances, whether through pipelines or in trucks. The addition of water reduces the dust generated during the transportation of dry ore, which is not only more environmentally friendly but also healthier for workers. Optimal chemical reactions In many mineral processing operations, chemical reactions are used to separate valuable minerals from the gang, unwanted material. The addition of water provides a suitable medium for these chemical reactions to take place efficiently. This is particularly important in processes like flotation, where bubbles attach to valuable minerals in a water-based slurry. Washing for gold using a sluice box is a traditional and effective method for recovering small particles of gold from milled rocks. The sluice box, a simple but ingenious device, helps to separate gold from other materials like sand, gravel, and sediment. 
Washing for gold using a sluice box is a repetitive and meticulous process, but it can be quite effective for recovering fine gold particles. Success in gold prospecting often requires patience and a keen eye for observing the behavior of the materials as they flow through the sluice. With practice and experience, you can improve your skills and increase your chances of extracting all your gold from your efforts. Gold mercury amalgamation, also known as amalgam, is a centuries-old technique used to extract gold from ore or alluvial deposits. It involves the combination of gold with liquid mercury to form an amalgam, which can be easily separated from other minerals or impurities. The washed material or concentrate is mixed with water to create a slurry. This slurry contains gold particles along with other minerals and impurities. Liquid mercury is introduced into the slurry. Mercury is unique in its ability to form an amalgam with gold due to its strong affinity for the precious metal. Gold readily dissolves into mercury, forming a stable compound. As the amalgamation process progresses, gold particles in the slurry combine with mercury, forming a gold mercury amalgam. The amalgam appears as a silvery, heavy liquid or solid, depending on the mercury to gold ratio. The amalgam is separated from the remaining slurry, typically by gravity methods. Since the amalgam is heavier than other materials in the slurry, it settles at the bottom or can be collected by using techniques such as straining through cloth or fine sieves. The amalgam is further processed to recover the gold. This involves separating the gold from the mercury. Common methods include heating the amalgam, which vaporizes the mercury, leaving the gold behind, or using retort systems to capture and condense the mercury vapors for reuse. In some cases, the amalgam may be pressed through a cloth to remove excess mercury. Kind of Yeah, but... 